I'll link to my 70s collection that kind of itemizes different um, 70s memories. Okay. Anyway, I had a lot of fun. I had a really fun childhood in Oak Cliff. It was just so nice. I was alone a lot, though. I, I, I felt like an only child. I had an older sister um, who was two years older than me. But she, she did her own thing. We're different. She did her own thing. I, I was alone a lot and in my room a lot, making, drawing pictures with my smell markers and listening to the radio and jumping on the trampoline, riding bikes with my neighbor friends. Um, but I was alone a lot, and I was also alone a lot at school because of these surgeries I had. I would have to stay in from recess, stay in the classroom. I remember after lunch having to go on my crutches to my classroom, and turn on the light. It was I was alone. I'm mean, just a child, and I just remember being alone, and I coped with that by, um, I drew pictures. My recess was drawing pictures. That was my thing. Um, and so I, I grew to love rainy days. When it rained at school, I was so happy, because everybody had to stay in for recess, and everybody did what I did. <laughs> and that's when I was cool because I could draw and I would draw pictures for them and I I'm I kind of I'm kind of like a childhood Michael Scott um yeah I can identify with some aspects of his character his need to fit in and his need and he just like forces people to to uh, he just forces himself into situations where it's a forced friendship <laughs> Oh, uh, that's for the the boat. When I read the Bow Weevil Club book, it really makes me think this is written by Michael Scott. It's the same thing. Um, and I wasn't really that. I mean, I was. I wasn't really that much of a reject. I wasn't. I had friends, but I was just a little bit weird, and I so I I was very self conscious. A lot of it had to do with my toe. <laughs> my toe. And I was different. I mean, I was a creative child. I was born that way. Very creative and very happy, very enthusiastic. I was born with a very sunshiny nature. And so, yes, I was ridiculed for that and mocked for that. It was an early start. Hey, it was good preparation for the world that I was born into. You know, you're going to be hated. But um, I was just a happy little child born in Dallas. I was blonde, blue eyes, um, just, here I am world, you know, I just, I was like a little burst of sunshine, and people hated that. From very, from a very early age, I've been hated by people who can't stand, um, happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> so, I learned, I learned to fit in I was like nine and ten, fourth and fifth grade. I, I'm like, I got to start being cool, man. I really got to start being cool. I got to tone it down. And I did, so I started hanging out more with those girls that I thought were so cool. I started hanging out with them and trying so hard to be like them and trying to be bad. Trying to be bad. Um, in fourth grade, I remember my teacher called me out into the hallway I thought that was cool. Oh, I've done something bad enough to be sent to the hallway. No, she's not sending me to the hallway. She wants to have a talk with me. And she gets me out alone in the hallway. And she goes, Amy, this is not you. You. And she gave me a whole lecture on bad influences and being myself. You need to be yourself. Don't try to change yourself to fit in. Don't. Don't go running around with people that are going to be bad influences and change your character. And I just nodded, but I went right back to what I was doing. And what I was doing, I was tearing out pictures, funny pictures out of 
basically vandalizing books from our library. <laughs> just as bad as I could get. Oh, oh, also at that school, I just, I was the very first one to write uh, graffiti in the girls' bathroom. Um, it was me. I wrote the F word in the girls' bathroom. And I will post a link to that, too. My childhood fascination fascination with the F word. I will link to that, too. <laughs> I tried to be bad, but it didn't work. Um, okay. But big picture, it was a really fun childhood. It was just so much fun. So many happy memories and happy home. And Okay. Then we move from Oak Cliff to DeSoto in 1981 when I'm 11 or 12. And so now I'm entering, I start sixth grade in DeSoto. I was fine with it. I had some cousins. My aunts and uncles had already moved to DeSoto. And so I, I knew some people, my cousins... My cousin introduced me to some people ahead of time. I, I I wasn't afraid to start a new school at all. I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, but it was a big culture change for me because in Oak Cliff, St. Elizabeth, we wore uniforms. I didn't have any clue about fashion or even the concept of you need to dress a certain way or um, or even style. Nothing, nothing. I That wasn't even... A concept in my mind I didn't know any of that and I remember walking to the bus stop on my very first day of school for sixth grade walking to the bus stop which is in my neighborhood and I was wearing my corduroy DC's overalls with my Mr. Bill pin <laughs> see in in St. Elizabeth like once a month or I don't remember but every now and then we had days where you could wear your own clothes and we all, in fifth grade, 